I was big into BBS, bulletin board systems in the war S scene back in the late 80s. The internet before the World Wide Web, basically. Call it piracy if you want, because that's what it was. We were dumb kids looking for free games, swapping downloads on message boards, running phone bills up, and swapping and copying our floppy disks. Now I played all kinds of games, but my favorites were RPGs, especially Wizardry and Ultima. This was about 89, about a year after Ultima 5 came out? During one of our floppy trading parties, my friend Jeff, who went by the handle Lord Camaro, <laughs> took me aside and pulled out a pile of seven 5.25 floppy disks, all marked with Abyss in black marker, which wasn't an uncommon way to label your Juarez back in the day. He said he got it from a BBS he called up in Texas. Ultimate developer Origin Systems was based in Texas, so we figured it might actually be the real deal. It's called Abyss, but I think it might be the prototype of Ultima 6. He went on to explain that I could use my same character from Ultima 4 and 5, but warned me that it was a very strange take on the Ultima formula. And that didn't surprise me, Ultima 4 and 5 had completely different twists on the previous Ultima games, so something new could be expected. I took the discs home and booted them up in my Commodore 64. As opposed to the adventurous theme that Ultima 5 started with, Ultima Abyss had a quiet and mournful theme. I began the game and imported my player from Ultima 5. There was a counterpoint in the theme in a sinister minor key. The game began with the Avatar being ushered through a moon gate and onto a ship bound for Britannia. While he was accompanied by old friends like Lolo and Dupre, the companion's portraits all looked aged and thin. Jana seemed the thinnest and most drawn of all of them, and she explained that Lord British had fallen ill with a mysterious disease and seemed to be descending into madness. She began to explain more about his delusions, but the ship struck a whirlpool. I had to watch helplessly as my companion sank into water. The screen faded to black and my character washed up near the shores of Britannia. I guided my character into the castle where the citizens were unwilling to talk, regardless of my mastery of the virtues. They all seemed to believe Lord British was dying, but were unwilling to say it for fear that it might actually occur. I decided to press the matter and seek an audience with the monarch anyway. Lord British failed to recognize the avatar, saying, Whisk this boastful fool from my sight. I know him not, and only able to repeat the phrase. After speaking to his guards again, he ordered my character sent to the dungeons. There was little to do in the dungeon, my only options were to rest or talk to the jester. Every time I rested, the status read one year later. I must have rested about forty-something times. By the fifteenth or so time, the jester had been replaced with a skeleton. I clicked through my inventory and stats. Two, my stats decreased and the robust young avatar faded to a scraggly husk of an old man. I was beginning to grow... frustrated when a guard appeared on the door of the cell and brought my character to Lord British, who said that he would release the avatar from prison. If he hunted down the traitors that had once been his companions, he gave no instructions on where to find them, uh, but that was quite typical of RPGs of the time. The first I ran into was Shimino, who had recently resurfaced in Buccaneer's Den. I didn't even bother talking to him. I merely attacked. All other characters in the town panicked and cleared out. And there was no battle, I simply attacked him in the status field, gave a disturbingly detailed account of the Avatar mutilating his former friend. I proceeded to find and slay the rest of the companions in short order. It seemed almost as wherever I went, they were programmed to appear. When they were all thought to be dead, the guard appeared again and escorted me back to the dungeon, saying he was waiting for a pardon from Lord British. The jail guard appeared once more. Lord British has passed. He hath not an heir, but a final request for the Avatar. Lord British's last command was to descend once again into the Stygian Abyss and cast the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom the magic tome that could always provide a just answer. Into lava, in the deepest pits of the abyss, the guard seemed possessed. He pushed my character to a waiting ship bound for the abyss, but uttered, I hope you fail. This is Bon Voyage. And lo and behold, the strangeness continued. 
My old avatar in rags and armed only with rusted weapons descended into the abyss. Rather than be hampered by the series' traditional enemies, they aided the avatar's quest. Ballers were only too happy to push stalactites over the bridge gaps. The game proceeded easily, reaching the pit at the bottom of the abyss was insultingly easy. I dragged the codex out of my inventory and then the game froze. Glitched. It returned to normal after the disk drive stuttered. A rag to prey followed close behind and questioned the avatar. He asked how one who had mastered virtue could be so easily commanded by a man whose mind had been so corrupted. The game then pitted the avatar against Dupre. Dupre emerged victorious against my frail and atrophied avatar. He took the codex and his punishment for the avatar's crimes and his wish for the people of Britannia to not know what a monster I'd become, walled the avatar into a cell that was identical in size to the one in Britannia's castle. The game again gave the options to rest and talk again. Even though they seemed, even though there seemed to be no one to talk to, talking revealed the dialogue from nowhere in particular. Thy fate is to starve here, die forgotten and alone. By this point I had enough of what must have been an elaborate prank. I turned the Commodore 64 off and tried to leave my bedroom. The door was stuck, I jiggled the lock and there was... I jiggled the lock well, like there was no tomorrow. I bashed the door with my shoulder, it didn't so much as shudder much less open. I sat on my bed and the dot matrix printer began to roll out line after line. Die, forgotten, and alone, interspersed with the words monster and traitor in lower case. Paper rolled off the printer in reams, and when it reached the last scrap, the final words were printed. Is your freedom worth the price paid? I turned my Commodore back on and went about the business of reformatting all the disks. The process was slow. The room seemed cold as I went to work. The first game popped out of the drive. The label was stripped from the disc. I later found it in the drive, but it was the only time that ever happened to one of the discs, before or since. I finished reformatting the discs. I felt as if they had been exercised, like a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I never mentioned Abyss again to my BBS buddies, but my interest in the scene fell by a wayside when I went to college in the mid-90s. It's also worth noting that Ultima 6 did not re resemble Abyss in any way, leading me to think that it was some early kind of mod. This was, I thought, the end of the affair. A while later, I saw the nickname Lord Camaro on a forum. I sent him a DM and lo and behold, it was my old BBS friend Jeff. We started talking in, reminiscing about the good old days, and one day we were talking about Ultima and Skype, and I brought up Abyss. Jeff was silent for a while and then said, I knew we'd end up talking about this. There had apparently been more to the game. Unlike me, Jeff's avatar had been strong enough to kill the prey. The avatar dropped the codex into the lava. The guard from earlier returned, facing the avatar. Screen faded to black, and the screen said, You are free of your responsibilities, of your morals, and your friends. Revel in thy freedom, avatar. He said the game then cut to the avatar wandering the overworld. He could visit all of the towns in the game, but few people would speak to him, and those that would would express fear at his return. He explored the world and found Britannia's castle to be empty. The throne room was empty except for a decaying corpse in the seat, and when he examined it further, the skeleton crumbled to dust, revealing a hollow in the base of the throne. Inside was a cloak with holes, ringed with blood, a dagger crusted with blood, and a cracked skull with a piece of parchment rolled in an eye socket. He removed the parchment It read simply, I am not myself lately, Lord British. After he found the parchment, the discs erased themselves, even the ones that weren't in his drive at the time. So he told me, I don't even know how. He also said he tried to call up the BBS he downloaded it from, but found it was disconnected. He wrote Abyss off as a very strange early attempt at a total conversion mod. It hasn't been mentioned much since, and neither of us have ever seen any reference to it outside of our own experiences. Sometimes I even think it was a joke he played on me. But if he went to that much trouble, why only me? We were acquaintances, but he knew a lot of other people too. He said he traded it around to other people, but hadn't heard from them. The genesis of Abyss is a total mystery. There isn't really any documentation of it online. If anyone has heard anything about it, I'd love to solve the mystery.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, was our first Ultima Creepypasta. If you don't know what Ultima is, I do not blame you. Ultima was an old series of RPG games that, as far as I know, ended production in 1994. I think they even had an online game, which was pretty impressive for back in the day. And the only thing recently is, uh, I believe, an iOS application in the series. It's safe to say the game are the, ga the games are not in production anymore. Uh, now, I don't have any connection with these games myself. In fact, the last game in the series, uh, you know, when the production ended, was basically the year I was born. It was a game that I never really got to touch base with, so we're gonna look at this from the creepypasta alone. The game itself had a nice story, which even if you didn't play the games, it does sound off. And I could feel this around my first read. I was like, there's gotta be something off. There's no way the actual games could be like this. And that was really nice for them to, for this person to write this creepypasta in a way that I guess was accessible for people who really didn't play the game at all. And I think that's kind of one of the things this person wanted to touch upon because I could suppose most people didn't play the Ultima series or something and, you know, are writing creepypastas or are frequenting the online space of creepypastas, I guess you could say. The game itself, the, the story ended up taking you to old age and finding up a character that could have ended both ways, uh, two, two, two ways really, and they, they did end up nice, okay, there, there wasn't anything overblown, there was no demons that came out of your system, you know, the, the printing happened, the weird formatting of floppy disks that weren't in the computer, that's a little sketchy, but then again, we don't really know that from our narrator point of view, but uh, at the end of the day, it was really interesting to see that both of these, uh, you know, endings were done in a very normal fine manner. Now, the using the guise of BBS boards in the internet of old makes a lot of sense, and it was nice to see the games were acquired in a very normal manner. You know, I've, I've seen BBS usage, and it makes sense, and I'm glad the creepypasta stuck to that, rather than, you know, have a floppy disk fly through the window with a note attached to it from Satan. Who knows, maybe it could have went there, and that would not have been good. But at the end of the day, I think these cre th this creepypasta itself is relatively nice. Now, while it is not perfect, and I'm sure the using the Ultima games may go over quite a few people, that's just from what I think, the games, you know, ended up, they ended up being used to their, uh, you know, sort of full potential. I think this creepypasta really took what it had and built upon it, you know. You, you had a game which led you through this weird sort of story into an abyss and all that and everything. And at the end of the day, you can sort of question whether it was, you know, something real from Ultima, from the actual developers themselves, or it was actually a total conversion mod like the creepypasta would try to lead you to believe. You know, it's one of those questions that may ultimately never get answered, and that's sort of the beauty of the creepypastas, to uh, leave you with an ending that's you know, somewhat ambiguous, but also definite. And that's where I think I'm gonna end this analysis. If you uh, like what you saw, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you would rate this creepypasta and what you would change to make it better. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out. Thank you.